everyone. This is Neelima Patnala, Assistant Professor at Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad. Today, we are in a series discussing about engineering geology, where we are studying about various aspects of geological features that are important for civil engineering constructions. Today, let us discuss about some construction failures due to geological effects, I mean geological uh, parameters. One among them is the Leaning Tower of Pisa, which is there in Italy. This is one of the most important and very popular uh, constructions that are that is a part of one, uh, wonders of the world. It is constructed to show the importance of Sicily city in Italy. The most important prominent aspect of this construction is that this is uh, also showing the uh, one of the construction marvels that is static from last nine uh, decades. This is basically constructed in 1173 73, and it is still standing with the same tilt. So this is one of the construction failures or uh, the ground geotechnical failures that we have observed uh, in the construction uh, industry. Now coming to the factors that are responsible for this tilt. One important factor that is responsible for this tilt is the layers of soil strata. So the layers at the uh, location of this tower is basically varied types. So you can see from the figure that they are, there is there are three types of layers, origin A, origin B and origin C. So in origin A, there are another four categories of uh, uh, layers of soil with different parameters. First one is man-made ground. Definitely constructions will not happen on man-made ground. But on silt, sandy silt, clay sandy silt and medium sand, it is quite possible because the, the foundation will not be more than few meters from the surface. This depth but for uh, nearly 10 meters below the ground, we have this silty clay. And more than 10 meters, upper silty clay is present where we have, where it is for 20 kilometers, 20 meters below the surface. Now, because of this, the varied properties have to be studied in order to understand the, uh, the ge geological uh, strength that is required for the construction to happen at that location. Now, improper evaluation of that soil strata is performed during the construction and improper consolidation is performed, which is not sufficient at that location. Another important parameter that is, uh, that highlights the tilt of that particular tower is the high water table. So this high water table is because of the proximity of the sea that is just near the tower location. Because of this high water table, the major problem lies with the clayey soils. So these clayey soils, which are also there at this location of depth, which are also there at the location of 25 meters from the surface of this uh, ground. So this clay uh, soils, when get saturated with high water table, they are highly compressible and they act according to the weight that is pre present on it. So it is not always true that uniform settlement happens at the structure with clay soils underneath. So such clay soils will create irregular uh, settlement at different locations depending on the weight that is present. So the poor water pressure is not released at those clay soils and this causes the improper or irregular settlement. Then coming to another factor that is important which highlights the tilt of the tower is the irregular distribution of soil strata. So irregular distribution of soil strata is understood by making bore holes throughout the uh, city. So there are some 11 bore holes that happen near the uh, construction uh, around the city, across the city. What it is understood is the soil strata is very irregular 
and it is bending and subsidence of soil strata is observed at various locations. That means we will be able to find the same silt at different heights and with irregular uh, uh, boundaries. So this silting, this silting or this uh, irregular distribution of soil strata will cause different levels of consolidation or different levels of settlements at different locations. So in the construction also the same thing happened and this silt whatever we have discussed in the previous slide is present at different depths at different locations and it is highly variable. Because of that this silting the settlement happened on the south side more when compared to the north side of the construction. This is the major tilting factor that is uh, responsible for the tilt at present. Then, then coming to the settlements. What kind of settlements are expected at a place which is very near to the seashore? Okay, the sea organisms that settled, that settle in the soil as a part of, as a part of settlements or sediments. So, uneven height on the north is observed. So, south is already subsiding because of the silty layers in addition to that, the sediments have accumulated in the north side, leading it to the complete tilt towards the south end of the construction. Then coming to another important factor that is responsible for the tilt is the leaning in instability. What is leaning instability? Consolidation of soil during stop period of construction. That means when construction is stopped for a while, Consolidation happens on its own and this is highly possible in compressible soils like clays and silts. So in compressible soils with the effect of stress, with the, with the, with the weight that is added up on the uh, soil because of the construction, they get compressed or they get settled and they get consolidated resulting in self-driven instability. Anyways, we do have the irregular settlements at different locations because of the sediments on north, because of the silty clays on the south. So anyways, it is irregular. And in addition to that, because of the leaning instability during the stop period of construction, that means when no construction is happening, it is driven by self, self-driven instability is generated. That means with the weight of the construction itself, there is a self-tilt that is happening. So this figure shows the, the increase in tilt because of the weight addition, because of the accumulation of or consolidation of the soil, because of uh, or, uh, consolidation of soil that is happening with the tilt, with the construction. So this figure shows the increase in, increase in the tilt for every year. Then coming to another mishap that happened during uh, the construction is that after, after certain time in the year 1838, construction of a walkway happened, took place. So this is basically to expose the column plinth and foundation steps. So to, to observe it, it is to um, enhance the structural features or to enhance the architectural features of the construction, this foundation steps and column plinth are exposed. Because of this, a walkway is constructed which increased the weight on the soil. This increase in weight on the soil, this happened on the south side, this also raised the water table, this happened on the north side and this also uh, raised the water table on the south. This is adding up to the leaning instability which is self-driven already existing at that site. So all four factors which includes the soil strata, different layers of soil and then we have irregular layers of soil or irregular distribution of layers of soil and then we have the leaning instability that is caused because of the stop period of construction and this was this was the initial conditions of the construction, uh, initial conditions of soil at the construction site. And this got worsened with the construction of walkway. Then coming to another case study, which deals with Baldwin Hill, Hills Dam in California. This was constructed in 1951, but collapsed in 1963. 
This has a height of 232 feet and a length of 650 feet. And it carries 250 million gallons of water. This is an earthen dam which was constructed to hold 250 millions of million gallons of water. What happened to this is there is loose sandy soil on large block side, block like rock. This rock is not the complete rock, but it's just a block. This rock is a cyst, which is nothing but a metamorphic rock with flaky texture. So it is highly susceptible to sliding or breaking in flakes. So this is the soil strata at the location and it is not studied in detail. Because of the sandy soil that is present at the location above the rock, it is highly susceptible to get saturated and it loosens the soil at the location which further causes the dam to collapse. But it didn't happen so suddenly. There is another feature that is adding to the geological features that are present. That is the active fall system. Inglewood fault system that is present very nearby, very nearby, not more than few meters. So this fault system is most active in the region and the movement of rock happened because of this fault system. So there are three parameters for the failure. First one is the presence of loose sandy soil and then the, with the presence of rock which is a cyst. And then another worst scenario is the fall system. So this is the worst combination that is present at the location, which caused the damage to or dam to fail. So what happened initially is the rock movement. So the rock, which is a cyst, moved a bit. And then this initiated cracks in the asphalt layer. Asphalt layer is present on the top of the soil layer here. So this asphalt layer is present in such a way that it provides drainage or it consolidates the soil for the water to stagnate. And then a drain is provided here, asphalt membrane, a complex drain system is provided. complex rain system is provided so that the water doesn't get interacted with the soil layer or sandy soil layer. So for that reason, the drain is provided. However, water penetrated into the soil. This is because of the movement of the rock. So the rock moved because of the fall system that is present. The, the, it might not be a very big earthquake that has moved the rock. But because it's just a block like block like rock, a large block, so it just moved a bit. It did not rupture or an earthquake is produced, but it just moved a bit. And this led to the movement of soil layer, which is already uh, sandy and loose. And this caused the crack to form in asphalt layer. So this crack has initiated the water to penetrate inside the soil. When soil got saturated, it just flowed and soil erosion took place. So because of the soil erosion, the soil underneath the dam is completely eroded towards the downstream side. So the crack propagated further. And not only that, because of the heavy water pressure that is present at the dam, there is a huge increase in the water water release towards the downstream and this has initiated the pipes to leak the water initially on the day of settlement. So what has actually happened? The sequence of events happened in this manner. So the water has leaked to the pipes at 11 o'clock in the morning and then slowly this uh, water creeping increased minute by minute. So the evacuation 
has taken place immediately along with the water uh, emergency services along with the emergency services that releases the water towards the downstream however after 3 o'clock in the afternoon the dam broke once everything got emptied it is understood that there is a huge soil erosion that has happened underneath the construction and lot of soil got eroded which initiated the crack in as 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 asphalt layer as well as the soil got drained off as well as the uh, water is draining underneath the dam also along with the upstream to downstream from the surface so these two failures give us a clear picture of how soil is playing a major role in the construction of structures so the geological features that we have observed in both the case studies where in one case we have seen that soil is completely varied and detailed understanding of the soil strata and detailed understanding of the strength that it can carry has to be evaluated during the construction or before the construction is actually happening then along with this we have seen that variedness or distribution of different soil layers at different locations in one construction which is just a few meters even then we have we have observed in in italy we have observed that the soil is why widely or variedly it is distributed so this distribution is also important so the number of bore holes that we are doing you know at the at a pipe uh, at a particular site of construction is also important along with the assessment of each soil layer in one bore hole so the number of soil layers that we have seen then then coming to the type of soil so what types of soils are resting on what types of soils so we it is expected that the construction's foundation has to go until rock is found but at many locations it is not possible to reach till the rock then today we have different construction techniques to carry out the constructions with the foundations even when rock is not touched so the choice of construction material the choice of construction type depends on the type of soil that is present at that location so we have to understand different types of soils and their extent of extent at the particular site and then decide upon the construction material and the construction type so with this we will end the case studies and further proceed how geology is affecting the construction industry thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates